Welcome to the Dojo Young Samurai. Konnichiwa Young Samurai. Welcome back to another Ninja Night Week. My name is Chris Bradford. I'm the author of the Young Samurai series and the Bodyguard series. And I'm going to be reading to you from my Young Samurai sampler, The Way of Fire. We are now coming towards the climax of the story. Um, we have just had the chapter Eruption, as you can pretty much guess. The volcano erupted with Akiko, Jack, uh, Yamato and Saburo on it. They do have the flower and Jack has thrown it to Saburo on another ridge. Um, because they are trapped. And he's thrown the, thrown the flat in a gourd, okay, so it's being kept safe. But Jack, Yamato, and Akiko certainly aren't safe. Chapter 12, Lava Run. No, said Saburo as the gourd sailed through the air and landed safely in his arms. There has to be another way. Go, screamed Akiko, before it's too late. The ground shook as Mount Haku spewed forth more fire and brimstone. There was a sharp crack, and several trees fell into the stream of molten rock. They burst into flame on impact. The tip of one tree, though, landed on the opposite ridge, the whole trunk spanning the river of magna. Praise Buddha, Saburo exclaimed, you can cross. You first, Akiko, insisted Jack, pushing her towards the makeshift bridge before she could protest. It would be just like running the log during the Kashuku. Without the bamboo trap, she replied, flashing him a nervous smile. Weaving nimbly between the branches, Akiko was across in no time. Your turn, Yamato, said Jack. But Yamato didn't move. And Jack could see the terror building in his friend's eyes. While Yamato hadn't had a problem with the log in the forest, Jack knew his friend was afraid of heights. Once Yamato had almost plunged to his death using a tree bridge similar to this one to cross a gorge, now he had the added danger of being boiled alive if he slipped. I'll be right behind you, Jack promised, stepping onto the tree with him. Yamato shuffled forward. The going was painfully slow, and halfway across Jack smelled the sharp aroma of burning pinewood. The bridge was on fire. Hurry, shouted Akiko, frantically beckoning them on. The tree began to crack and splinter. Jack urged the petrified Yamato to move faster. The trunk suddenly dropped lower over the molten river. Yamato stumbled, screaming as he landed among the scorched branches. Jack lunged forward and grabbed him round the waist. Hanging above the lava, the heat was so intense that all the hairs on the back of his arms were singed. Come on, we don't want to swim in that, exclaimed Jack, dragging Yamato to his feet. Just as the tree finally succumbed to the flames, the two of them tumbled onto the safety of solid ground. You took your time, said Saburo, helping them to their feet and handing Jack the gourd with the flower in it. Oh, I'm glad that's over, Yamato gasped, his face pale and drawn. But it wasn't. The last explosion had diverted the lava around Saburo's ridge too, and it was now racing towards them. Soon the land upon which they stood would be swallowed up by molten rock. What in the hell, said Yamakiko, a note of desperation in her voice. Looks like there's only way, one way off this mountain, said Saburo. He pointed to the entrance of the old lava tube. Miraculously, the meltwater stream was still running into it, though the flow was rapidly ebbing away. You are joking, said Akiko, vigorously shaking her head. It's that or cremation, replied Saburo, and without a moment's hesitation, he launched himself into the tube, sliding away into the darkness. It's either crazy or the bravest samurai I've ever met, exclaimed Yamato. What, what, what other choice do we have? Taking a brief glance around, he then jumped down the tube after Saburo. Akiko looked at Jack, who was securing the gourd into his obi. The lava was about to engulf him. Time was running out. If, if we don't make it, I want you to know I, I stammered Akiko, her eyes brimming with tears. There was the sound of an almighty explosion from within the belly of the volcano. Go, urged Jack. Akiko pushed off down the tunnel, Jack following close behind. He found himself quickly picking up speed as the incline steepened. The tunnel twisted and turned through the terrifying blackness. All he could hear was the rush of wind and the gush of running water. Something hard and brittle whipped into his face, shattering on impact. He felt the warm wetness of blood run down his cheek. Then he remembered the sharp toothed stalactites he'd seen at the lake and lay flat in the hope he would be lucky enough to avoid the razor-sharp shards of rock. 
He could hear the cries of his friends ahead of him. The tunnel was becoming lighter. They must be nearing the end of this insane death slide. Then he realised the orange glow was coming from behind. He glanced back to see a wall of red hot lava coursing down the tube after him, the meltwater bursting into steam on contact. Jack could do little but pray he'd outrun it. Things are hotting up for Jack and his friends on Mount Haku. If you want to find out what happens next in The Way of Fire, join me in my next chapter episode on my YouTube channel, Chris Bradford Author. I hope you enjoyed that. Sayonara.